Well, I'm back again today experiencing a certain amount of humility because I was working on this acoustic bass guitar neck and I went and buggered it up a good one, so much so that I have to rebuild it. I put a template on here uh, to route this headpiece to final shape. The double face tape slipped and I put a big bugger right there and it cut that in so far that it just ruined the neck. So got to rebuild. Well, what came out of it uh, was I thought, you know, maybe I could demonstrate today how to put a slot in a neck for a truss rod. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate that on a shaper, which means you could use the same technique on a shaper if you have one or on a router table if you have one. Now, I know a lot of folks are doing these with uh, handheld routers on a router fence, and that works if you're careful. I don't prefer that method because a router has a lot of torque and it can get away from you pretty easily or you just slip around a little and you, know, you get kind of nasty results. So I prefer the stationary tools to do it. Now, I've already slotted this, and then I thought, well, you should do the video. So we're going to go backwards and forwards a little bit. I had a special problem. As you can see, the headpiece is wider than the neck shaft itself. Normally, I just use the edge of the neck shaft to center up for that truss rod slot. But I can't do that because this is going to catch on the fence. So what I did was, when I made the material to glue these ears on, I just made enough of it so that I could set this right next to the neck shaft and now use this as my guide against the rip fence. And I know what you're asking. Well, why did you glue those ears on there before you slotted that? Normally, I wouldn't glue those ears on and I'd get this job done before that. But in this particular case, I've got a poplar heartwood veneer on the back of this and it goes all the way through the joint. And so this had to be done before anything else could happen. There was just no way around it. So that's why this kind of circuitous route to that uh, operation. But I'll show you a little bit about how I centered this up. And I'm going to show you an easier method where if you have a nice straight neck shaft, you can accomplish this task in just a heartbeat or two. I'm going to use this piece of butternut as uh, a demonstration. This is a pretend neck. Um, I don't happen to have another neck blank that is not slotted. So I'm just going to use this for demonstration. And what I'm going to show you now is how to get your truss rod slot nicely centered. If you set up your equipment and try to center right on the neck blank and you miss that, um, if you don't have much, much room to test with, it could get a little embarrassing or, you know, I suppose you could really mess up your work if you weren't careful. And I have a little easier way that you can center your work up. What you're going to do is you're going to need your table saw and you're going to have your neck uh, made up. And you're going to put that against the fence and you're going to adjust that and you're going to take any scrap of wood, any scrap at all, that is wide enough for you to conveniently rip it and you're going to simply put the two of those together. My scrap is lined up so that it will just barely be cut by the blade, right? It's, you don't need to take off a bunch. You just need enough to get it to cut a straight line for you. And of course, you need this edge to be beautifully straight, jointed, and all of that sort of thing. So I'm going to make a racket here, uh, and I'm going to rip this and then we'll move to our next step. So it's going to be noisy, but I'm going to try and talk over it. Okay, so now that I've ripped this piece of pine here, this scrap, I'm going to put this against the fence because it has now moved over a distance that is exactly equal to the width of your neck. And I'm going to take a third scrap of wood that also has a nice 
jointed or plain straight edge. And I'm going to rip that against this fence. So what I have now is I have this scrap of wood exactly, and I mean exactly, the same width as my neck blank. And I'm going to use this as a test piece to help me set up at the shaper. So I'm set up at my shaper here. Um, I have a fence that I made for this purpose. Uh, a standard shaper fence is a split fence, as some of you probably already know. And I found mine to be a little bit less than convenient for this purpose um, for various reasons. I think it had to do with reach or something. I don't remember. At any rate, I have this fence made. And I've marked this over here so that I can tell where I want to stop my neck. It's just a convenient feature that I couldn't do with a split fence at all. So having that set up, now the question is, where do you adjust the fence or how to make sure that you're centered over your bit? I'm cutting a quarter inch slot. I'm using an upcut spiral uh, solid carbide bit. It doesn't matter. You could use a straight, uh, a straight cutter. It doesn't matter. Um, one of the things that I have found is that to cut this slot at full depth in one pass, I wouldn't do it unless I'm using a half inch shank bit. But even then, the cutting bit is a quarter of an inch in diameter, so it has a fragility and there may be a little bit of flop there. So it's a lot easier on the bit if you cut a little at a time and work your way up. So now I have to center this. Well, I have found, I've used all kinds of methods to try and do this. Precise measuring between the wing of the cutter and, and here, subtracting half the width of the bit and all of that stuff. And tell you the truth, the best thing I've found is that if I can rotate that bit so I can get it oriented the way I want it with the wings of the bit pointing to the fence and away from it, at right angles and if I take my piece loosen my fence up and I can see the center of that bit pretty clearly and I come up to it as best as I can and tighten down now here's why we took the trouble to make this scrap because we're gonna run a test on this okay so we're gonna do that right now so here's my test and if I measure that I'm at 976 thousandths of an inch on one side, and I'm over an inch on the other side. So I'm off by a good 50 thousandths, 40, 50 thousandths of an inch. The question is, which way do I want to go? Well, this side that was against the fence is too wide, so that means the fence wants to come this way. Now, you can nudge this back and forth and keep testing. That's a good way to do it. But I ran into another method of doing this. Um, let's get a better measurement here and see how far off we are. Okay, 975. And then we're at 140. So we're about 70 thousandths of an inch away, which means that I want to move my fence 35 thousandths of an inch this way. Here's a good trick. You take a feeler gauge, right? And I'm going to find 35 thousandths of an inch. And there it is right there. There's my 35 thousandths leaf. I have a magnetic block. These are easy to get, easy to find. You could probably do this some other way, maybe with some double-faced tape or something. What I'm going to do 
is set that block as close to the cutter as I practically can. I'm going to set it down 35 thousandths of an inch away. Let me try that again. I want a leading edge right there. So there's my 35 thousandths of an inch. And I'm going to move the camera just a little. And now I'm just going to take that fence, move it over that 35 thousandths, tighten down, remove my block, and now I'm going to run another test. And this time I'm going to come all the way up through my test piece, I think. So let's see if we're in the neighborhood now. And this time I cut in a little bit further so that my next measurement will be valid. And here I'm at an inch and about five thousandths. And I'm at an inch and eleven thousandths. Now we're talking about a six thousandths of an inch difference here. You may be happy with that. Personally, I would tweak that. I'd like to have these within three or four thousandths at the most of being exactly the same. But maybe I'm splitting frog hairs. I would think in reality, if you're within 20 thousandths, you might be all right. But that's a judgment call that you have to make. And if you can make this absolutely precise, if you can dial it in within two, three, four thousandths of an inch, then you're all to the good. Now, for me, this is extremely important. Because all of the jigging that I use to form my neck heels and other operations on that neck are performed by using that truss rod slot as a registration. So it's, it's imperative that I have that as centered as I can possibly get it. So once I'm happy with that position, now I'm ready to mill my truss rod slot. But as I said, I don't like to mill these at full depth. So I'm going to run my cutter back down a little bit here and I'll make a cut with that now you have to know when to stop coming up you can do that a couple of different ways uh, if you have a contour gauge you can use that compare that to your truss rod and whatever uh, spline you might put over it but another way making tools again you can just take a block and determine what your truss rod slot depth is and just dado that across that block. And see, here I have one in the center and I've got one out on the end so I can check this way or I can set it up this way. So I'm just going to make sure I'm well below that for my first pass and I'm going to cut my truss rod slot. And I need to grab my neck blank. And I'm going to set you off to the side a little bit so that the material does not hit the camera. And we'll give this a try. Okay, there's one pass. Now I'm going to come up a little and make another pass. Now, if you can see the marks that I have right here, uh, I will put a pencil mark here that tells me on the neck where I want to stop. So I can just mill that and I can come right up to where my pencil mark is. And I can stop right there. By lifting neatly against the fence, I can come up out of the cut. So that's how I slot my necks for a truss rod. Um, just a reminder, the neck, the edges of the neck blank must be absolutely parallel and they must be, of course, absolutely straight. That's imperative. If you use a scarf joint headpiece like I do, if for any reason that headpiece is tilted just a degree or so and that 
tends to hit the fence and hold the, the next shaft away, you're going to have to deal with that issue. Either move away from the fence with another parallel block or something because that will eventually hit the fence and make your truss rod slot a little bit crooked. But this is really simple and easy to do and it's quite safe. Uh, that's the other thing I like about it. Uh, with a handheld router, to me, uh, the less I can run a router by holding it in my hands, the happier I am most of the time. So simple and easy. Now I do this before I glue a heel block down. And I also do it before my hef, my, excuse me, before my head plate veneer goes down because that'll create a situation where the neck is going to travel and then bump up on the table. So you want to make sure you do that in advance of putting the headpiece veneer on. And I do it in advance of gluing down my heel block in the event that it, for any reason, might interfere. It just makes things a little bit easier. Now this will get glued on in the correct position and we'll go from there with the rest of the machining of the neck. So I hope this has done some good for some folks. Thanks a lot for watching. I am, of course, the Pragmatic Luther and the biggest manufacturer of guitars in the town of Triangle. That's a huge mantle to carry, but somehow I bear up to it. Uh, once again, happy holidays to everyone out there, and thank you for watching.